Your Excellency Professor Tujani Bandi, President of General Assembly, Your Excellencies, distinguished participants. At the outset, allow me to thank the President of the General Assembly for this laudable initiative. I also thank the Secretary General for his passion and commitment to the subject under review. Furthermore, my appreciation goes to the ANCA members of the Alliance for Poverty Eradication for the commitment and the importance they attach to this cause. In these difficult times, it takes considerable boldness and courage to consider that which is in the interest of the greater good. The ANCA members have done just that. The COVID-19 pandemic risks reversing decades of progress achieved in the efforts to eradicate poverty. It is sad to note that more than 700 million people, or 10 percent of the world's population, are classified as living in extreme poverty. All the while, they struggle with the most basic needs like nutrition, shelter, health, education, and access to clean water and sanitation. In this condition, the number of poor people is estimated to triple as livelihoods across almost all economic sectors have been adversely affected. The current crisis has further shown how interconnected the world is and there's a greater need for closer interaction and collaboration as we confront its impact. In Nigeria, with a population of about 200 million, over 54 percent of our people live in various stages of poverty. And the prospect of our population sliding further into extreme poverty is real. Excellencies, Nigeria attaches great importance to poverty eradication. It is for this reason that in May 2019, on my inauguration for a second term in office, our government committed itself to starting a new program of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty within a 10-year period. In Nigeria, as in many other countries, the domestic supply chains and trading corridors have come under enormous strain. This has brought to fore the health versus economics debate, a subject that has captured the attention of global leaders and shaped the debate on how best to respond to the global pandemic while allowing citizens to earn their livelihoods. This debate is even more important for countries in sub-Saharan nations with large informal economies and a significant number of daily wage earners. The potential fallout makes this a national development priority. In line with the aspirations of the Sustainable Development Goals, we have equally integrated the economic, social, and environmental dimensions of the Sustainable Development Goals into our economic plans. In response to the challenges posed by COVID-19, the government has recently developed an economic sustainability plan aimed at stimulating the economy and extending protection to the very poor and other vulnerable groups through pro-poor spending. It is my conviction that devoting our efforts towards human capital development, efficient management of our resources, greater financial inclusion, and transformation of the agricultural sector 
to ensure food security are crucial to poverty eradication. In this regard, Nigeria continues to strengthen its existing social safety net initiative by increasing access to enrollees who fit the various programs in the scheme. Nigeria will also continue to provide easier and increased access to financial services for micro and small scale businesses through the government enterprise and empowerment program. But we are determined to do more. Nigeria holds a view that education is a critical driver of sustainable development and has an immense capacity to eradicate poverty. Educating our children, especially the girl child, contributes significantly to the fight against poverty, environmental sustainability, and improved health, as well as building peace and resilient societies. I therefore welcome the launch of the Alliance for poverty eradication and endorse all multilateral actions aimed at eradicating the scrooge of poverty and accelerating the realization of the sustainable development goals. I thank you. Thank you.